Tu maru maru no Te tua te whātui a puti Ka titi rohau ki peka peka Ara mai rā te karere Ko pōna tūri Uia mai ki hangare a whānu I gō ngā mano matua tama Wairua tapu me ngā nera pono Me te māngai Ke tatu mai ana koutaki wāini tēnei whakamui me te o mātou. Hei tātari ngā kupu katoa e whakapūkina ana mātou i roti tō kouta kroditanga. Hā ko kouta nei hoki te tīmatanga me te whakawati ngā mai o tēnei kōrero. Hā ko te māngai no hei tautoko, ai ane, ake nei, ai. We, as people, um should mind together e mahi ko tahi tanga to ensure that we can cope with the many people who like ourselves at times are mawiwi have loved ones who are mawiwi and last of all but not least I pay homage to those in our in our team um, our, the young fellow who, who died this morning, who works in the adolescent department. Our, um, our uh, acting uh, manager, who, whose auntie died yesterday and has gone back, he's not with us, he's gone back to her thing. And we are, I ask that you give each and every one of us, including the, the people in this interview, that you grant them the power and the strength to get through any um, problems that they may have. And we ask this in the name of thy Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. E o ngā mana whakaungia mai mātou i roti tō aroa nō. Pai hire tiki te rangi māri ngā wā katō ko te maanga i tūtuko mai. Ai ane, ake ane, ai. Kia ora. Ha, kia ora. Ko tu roharonga tōku ingo oa, corrected, ko haravuda. Tu roharonga ahau no wai mārama tōku wai kānga. My wife reckons I'm lucky to be alive. I'm 80 now. Um, I went to Korea and uh, unbeknown picked up a few um, bugs, I suppose. Um, in 1990, uh, I was found that I had prostate and bowel cancer. I was given radiation, six weeks of radiation, which was fine because it stopped everything. And uh, and then for nine years I was fine. But in, in, nine, in, for, in, 1990, in 1999, uh, I got a repeat of uh, the prostate cancer. Um, and because they, could, they couldn't give me um, radiation again, they could only do it once. I, I was given the choice of, of, uh, of three things. I could do nothing and would probably be dead in seven months. I could have a, a pill which would probably kill the, the prostate cancer but would leave me with some mental health problems. And the third one was um, they uh, could re my, remove my testicles. Um, this meant that my wife and I went home and had a good talk because at that stage we were still enjoying one another's company. Um, but she said oh, I'd sooner go without anything than have you pass away. So we decided on removing my testicles. Um, that was okay because it was only a minor 
operation and from that year from 2000 till now um, I haven't had any problems um, with the actual uh, prostate cancer. However, I do have some side effects from the radiation. I work, I've been in work here for the last, oh, I worked for 20 odd years at, uh, in mental health in Palmerston North. And the last 10 was um, under Dr. Mason Jury, who was a senior, um, uh, not psychologist, uh, psychiatrist on mental health. And so I learned a lot at that time I was up with the play, I had created a number of Māori models of health. Um, I created one model which was accepted by the New Zealand Association of Social Workers and currently we developed it into a, a uh, model of Māori for Māori. So it was only used by Māori. Uh, social. I was a social worker and it was only used by Māori social workers. Um, yeah, we found it pretty good, you know, really good that uh, that at least uh, I as a Māori could had developed something that could help other Māoris, including myself. Um, and that was through assessing us, did how we did our job, was our job, um, was it appropriate that we used the Māori model or, um, or was it actually... Um, um, not working. We had to, like I sort of researched by different people to see if it was working and yep. I work here in mental health, I've worked in mental health for since 1986 um, in uh, Lake Ellis and in Manawaru at Palmer's North Hospital for the majority um, of my time as a social worker. I was a psychiatric social worker and uh, uh, I hold a master's degree in social work, a master's, a master's applied degree in social work. I'm I, I retired, came here to do a bit of fishing, came home and the idea was to stay here for a year while if you come around my place you'll see that the, the nets and the fishing line are still in the plastic. And I was here for a week and then um, people came to visit me and asked me if I would I would um, actually uh, come and work for them. So I did. And I've been here six years after retirement working for um, Howard or Māori. At times I have trouble remembering um, things, but that, that has been, I don't see it as being part of um, uh, I don't see it as being part of Alzheimer's or anything like that because I had that with me a long time since I had my first, um, first uh, radiation treatment. And the doctor's saying you'll lose your memory for a little while but it will come back. Well, after my treatment, I thought I'd done really well because I didn't take time off. Like the doctor said, I would get tired and would eventually have to knock off work. Um, I've, I went through, and, and although I went right through the treatment and worked, I found out later on that my niece, who was a social worker with us also, and my supervisor were actually carrying me and doing half my caseload. Um, so I was grateful for that because I didn't knock off work. But what was lucky is that my supervisor, supervisor wasn't a Māori, but uh, she was from England but it lived amongst us and lives two doors away from me. Even now we live close together. 
and her daughter is the senior social worker here, Lorraine Sayers. So Lorraine and I have a close relationship, just like we do with her mother. Um, yeah, so having those, those two people in my team, or four, really, really meant good because I was doing my kaupapa Māori things was happening. There was no objection from my supervisor, and my niece was like me. We wanted to work with Māori, um, and we were, we were allowed. We worked with others as well, but yeah. So the work, I thought was really good work because we worked with people with mental illness, uh, who placed themselves in danger. Uh, yeah, I, I suppose it, it was about um, the word that we treasure in Māori, the manakitanga, was what it was all about. That regardless of how bad our clients were in mental health, we did our best to ensure that they were treated fine. All the doctors, um, trusted us because our main supervisor for Palmerston North um, Social Welfare it was the name at that time was a guy by the name of uh, John Bradley who had no who wouldn't hesitate to stand up and speak and tell them that they're not doing it culturally safe and so I didn't have any problems because I could say that and he would support me but I, I come from an area where Māori and Pākehā I live side by side. I come like from Porangaho, where one of the MPs was Colin McIntyre, and he sat on our pipe. Line. So you know, so there I was. Whenever there was a Parker group came up, the old Mary fellas was telling him to stand up and mihi, and he used to mihi to the Parkers coming on to our marae. So yeah, I, I guess I have my strong comradeship with Pākehā. However, even my best of friends uh, failed to understand um, uh, how Wairu uh, uh, um, plays a big major part in our lives. If they had of, um, then my stay in mental health would have been excellent. But sometimes they wouldn't accept our values and our beliefs in what would be best for mental health. Uh, they came from England, they came from Australia, they were educated in, in uh, uh, clinical mental health programs and they wanted us to adopt it, but, but we wouldn't without them acknowledging that we had our own protocol. So that, that was my stint. While I was a social worker, I did find that there were one or two of my Pākehā comrades who didn't believe in... Um, I guess for me the word is whakamoe miti, but, but most because of my religion, I'm a minister in the Ratna Church. Um, our, our word for... Um, Karakia is whakamoe miti. And so they didn't believe in in uh, our whakamoe miti and in our connection to, to Wairua. They were unsure that they could break, uh, when I say break, they could break us into pieces. They could have a, a heart specialist. They could have a podiatrist for our feet, they could have a, yeah, a psychiatrist and a psychologist for mental health problems. Whereas within the Māori world, we were whole, holistic. So we treated if we were treated if our, if our, um, if our body was uh, aching, then our spiritual side would be aching as well and they couldn't see how they couldn't accept. So there was a little bit of difference even now. 
I don't believe that a lot of those psychiatrists, no matter how good in there, and most of them are kind, but their belief is such that it actually hurts us. They don't, they tend not to accept that all they have to do is try and understand where Māori are coming from, that most of their jobs would be made easier. Um, sorry. Um, they would be made easier and um, and uh, they would get a better rapport with Māori clients and Fana. Because with us, the clients are not an individual. With them comes their whānau, their hapu and their iwi. So that if, if I was stuck, my wife would get in touch, bring my family in, and if they couldn't do anything with me, then it would, they would go and then approach my hapu, and I've got six hapu. They would bring them in and, and look who the medical people were in and how I could be treated, how I could be brought around. If not, then they would go to the wider ones, to the iwi, and they would find um, psychiatrists or psychologists or whatever, doctors, the GPs, who would be able to recommend how I should be treated and so forth. So, um, and and these were good people, don't get me wrong, I'm not saying I, I hated um, working with Pākehā because that's not true. Um, just like here, but we still have a lot of the staff here that don't follow us in um, in our way to they can't see how we can we can become um, and I and I, I guess the good example for that is Mason Jury's Fare Tapafa, which is about the whānau, the tinana, which is the physical part of of me. Um, the Henningara, which is my um, my thinking powers or my brain in regards to that, and whānau. So we, um, yeah, so no matter how hard we try, but what I do notice that here in Hastings, a lot of the Pākehā nurses and a lot of the social workers actually lose, use that model when they work. I have a deaf daughter and, a, and she has a deaf husband and they had four children. Um, their youngest was a boy who was 10 at the time when, and his behaviour was strange. And so I got home from Wellington and my daughter brought him and I just had one look at him and I said to my wife, hang on to him. And I rang 111 and got the ambulance to take him straight in. They uh, took him in and then my son drove me in because once again I wasn't allowed to drive. Um, um, we went in and the doctor said I'll put him in the children's ward and we'll, we'll look at him on Monday. I said today's Saturday. I want you to do it before Monday. And I said because if you don't I'm going to see you get the sack. I said that kid's uh, you know, I had learned a lot through working with uh, my years in, as a psych social worker. And I knew that he said to me, Papa, can you, can you turn the lights on? It's too dark. And this was three o'clock in the afternoon in October when it was plenty of daylight. And I knew then there was something wrong with his, in his brain that he couldn't see, all of a sudden he was going blind. So I rung one one, told him, and their concern was, can he get to a gun or a knife? I said, no, his grandmother's hanging on to him. And he's sitting by his grandmother saying, and then, why don't you put the lights on, I can't see. And so we, we got him in, and they, they gave him an MRI scan on the Sunday and found a tumour on his brain. He, um, yeah, he, that, on, that Sunday, on that Sunday evening, they flew him to Starship. 
um, where they had three guys that tried to operate. They couldn't, so they gave radiation and what's that other drug? Um, you know, that you have, uh, your hair drops out. Yeah, so I go out once a week to Waimarama and put some flowers on. Um, we left a lot of his schoolmates to school in Fielding, St Joseph's, because my daughter was deaf, she went to a Catholic school and became a Catholic. Um, and so did her, her children all became Catholics. And St Joseph's Catholic School, every school holidays, we left the plastic container like what we do for, with a lot of uh, notebook paper and pens and the kids come there and write and leave notes for them and that's happened since everything and then and one of them wrote please let us know when you put a stone on yeah so yeah that, that was that that was for me now that was showed that showed me how much our family got on with the Pākehās around us. We had them at our marae and fielding, Haurangi, for one night. We had them at the house for one night. You couldn't move. And my son-in-law wanted to keep him there till for the funeral. I said, no, you can't. You're going to get a lot more people. And where are you going to put them in its raining? So what we did was we went. We went to the marae at Haurangi. Um, and there was 800 there um, for service at night, and there was 800 there to see them leave fielding. We, they came all the way here, and then we had them here for one night, and we buried them the next night, next day. And there was over 800 at his funeral. For a boy who was 10, who had just turned 11, that was tremendous, that, that so many we had to thank the people of Fielding because they raised a lot of money. They raised 26000 to help uh, my daughter and her husband through the crisis. He was deaf, but he had his own business. He said, I'll give it away. Never worked for the most of that year because he spent with his wife beside his son's bed in, in Starship. Starship is one I must mention. They're fantastic. They're just out of there. That goes and there. There's no such thing as colour, but they do ask you: Is there anything that Māori that we don't want to leave out? I said, you just do what you can. You just do what you can to help um, uh, my grandson, and so that's what they did. I guess um, one of the things that I have to be thankful to the people in Starship is that uh, my grandson couldn't cope with the MRI scans. He had to, um, he was put in a, a mask of hard plastic, thick plastic mask that covered down to his, covered his shoulders so he couldn't move his head he could only move his eyes and he was like that and he couldn't stand it he would be screaming out let me out of here i don't want to do this i'd sooner die you know that that's what he um so rather than him getting upset if he didn't want to do it they didn't force him so they were thankful and they said to us quite early, there's nothing much we can do. If we operate, we could, he could be a vegetable and for th the next 30 years, who's going to look after him? He won't know any of you and he may not because the brain damage we believe would be too great that they would cause so trying to save his life. So we, that's, we, we spoke about it is it better to to um, let him spend quality time now while we had him, or is it better? Um, 
or and let him go, or is it better to try and keep him and finish up with somebody who's bedridden for the next 30 or 40 years? Because he was only 11, 10, 10, 11. Turned 11 just before he died. So yeah, so that starship themselves were good. They had, they had little rooms, and currently they're going around collecting to build a room where parents could sleep um, next door to them. So that we always said we're only allowed two in there. We had, like he had all, we, not me, he had all blacks coming to see him. He had different churches. It just was unbelievable. Pacific Island, they had heaps of different groups that came up and saw him. Um, and of course I can't forget McDonald's house they were just fantastic you know you had a cupboard there that you could store all your food stuff and nobody touched it but you had cooks that came in from outside who cooked um, a meal uh, four nights a week you had a, a lunch that was cooked in another area of the of Starship for all those who um, who's children were part of Starship. Uh, yeah, they were just fantastic, you know, and you'd, um, I said, well, it would have cost us a lot more if they, we didn't have those meals. So we had four, or oh, I guess seven, eleven meals a week, you know, made for us, brought in all the groups, all the little groups were bringing their, mostly salads, and I said, oh, I'm not a salad man, but, but I guess... <laughs> Yeah, so no, McDonald House was fantastic. And I always said to my wife, if I ever win Lotto, the first million's going that way to Starship. So, yeah, I guess for me, they do try. Like we were there when he did the first operation and he got halfway through and then came out and told us, I have to stop. I can't get in past the blood vessels and it's bleeding too much, I can't see him now, we've got to, yeah. So all those things, and so we had to wait for a week till he'd settled down, but then they x-rayed it, and there was nothing they could do. Whilst it was always on our mind, we ourselves had to be brave, you know, and it was hard to understand. I guess um, being, a, being a rat and a minister, um, I get my strength from my church. We do have we do have some problems here on the ward where some of the nurses prevent us from doing things money. Sometimes it has to happen where you have too many sick people who are both Māori and, I don't know whether I should say Pākehā, but I'll say non-Māori, because you have Indians, Chinese and all the rest of them there who are very sick. And uh, when the Māori's going, we have church and we have to sing and, and so forth. And they ask us to stop singing. I could understand that, but it was it's part of our way of life. And for us not to be able to to sing to our loved ones, find it pretty pretty hard, eh? Um, so we used to ask for a room and they wouldn't give us a room down the corridor, but now they do try it. We do have our little debates amongst ourselves because sometimes we're different tribes, um, but we don't let it dominate, hey. Or oh, is it our kahunga who does it, right? And I said, well, that's how we've been taught. But the other one is a kahunga new person too. Um, yeah, and we, yeah, we actually get on good, really. Maru maru no te tua te fatui aputi